Do you know what was the fastest growing stock of the last decade? Some of the most common guesses would be Apple, Google, Amazon, and Facebook. Those of you who are more involved in the markets might guess something like Nvidia, AMD, or Netflix. And those of you trying to cheat using the title would guess Domino's. But you'd actually be wrong because the number one performing non-penny stock was some company called Neurocrine Biosciences. But number two was indeed Domino's which produced a whopping 3,753% return throughout the 2010s. That's three times Amazon, over four times Apple, and over 11 times Google. So here's how Domino's squashed all the tech giants and became the second fastest growing stock of the 2010s. Taking a look back at the late 2000s, Domino's was already one of the largest pizza chains in the world. But they didn't particularly have a good reputation. People actually hated their pizza. The reason they were able to grow so big was because of their insane convenience and speed. Throughout the 1980s, Domino's introduced one of the most infamous marketing campaigns in food delivery history. They promised that if they couldn't deliver your pizza in 30 minutes, it was free. Given that a significant portion of the pizza buying market was just broke college students and young adults, this was extremely attractive. Sure, the pizza might suck, but you had a chance of getting it for free. Unfortunately, this promise put delivery drivers under a lot of pressure, and Domino's would end the campaign after the death of 20 delivery drivers. Despite the negative press they received for putting delivery drivers under so much stress, Domino's basically became synonymous with fast deliveries and convenience. And this was really the secret behind their success. But as other pizza chains like Pizza Hut started to catch up to Domino's by embracing phone orders and offering rapid delivery themselves, the appeal of Domino's fell off a cliff. Like I said, people hated their pizza, and you can't really overstate this. In fact, Domino's ran a consumer taste test and found that people straight up liked pizza less when they knew it was from Domino's. So yeah, it was bad. And with the competition on the rise, Domino's had to do something. This is around the time that a man named J. Patrick Doyle would be promoted to CEO of a Domino's. Patrick had been an executive at Domino's since 1997, and he witnessed the internal downfall of Domino's firsthand. On paper, Domino's was doing just fine with their locations booming and revenue increasing. But the complaints from customers were mounting up, and it was just a matter of time until customers hit a breaking point which eventually came in 2008. As we all know, when the 2008 financial crisis rolled around, basically every single stock in the world got crushed. But most quality stocks were covered by early 2010. The same could not be said about Domino's. When the crisis started, Domino's crashed 60%, which was a bit more than normal, but nothing too crazy. And then Domino's crashed another 80% from there, which added up to a total of 92%. They did recover a good amount from there, but they were still down 76% at the start of 2010. To put this in perspective, the owners of Pizza Hut, Yum Brands, didn't even crash 50% at that peak, and they would reach a new all-time high by April of 2010. So clearly, there was much more to Domino's downfall than just the recession. Patrick was appointed CEO in March of 2010, and with that begins the insane rise of Domino's. Patrick's first order of business was addressing the criticism head-on and being transparent. He went out and admitted that their pizza was trash. Patrick released commercials that showcased the horrendous feedback they received from focus groups. He showed the feedback to employees, chefs, customers, executives, and basically the entire world. Pizza, where's the love? <laughs> How hard? Bread, sauce, cheese, fresh ingredients. Doesn't feel like there's much love in Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza Crust to me is like cardboard. Is it hard to watch this stuff? Is this yeah. Criticism? Yeah, it's hard to watch. By finally acknowledging the criticism instead of just ignoring it and bragging about their convenience, Domino's was actually able to address the problem. The top chefs at Domino's got together and worked on creating a new pizza recipe from scratch. They came up with 10 different crusts, 15 different sauces, and dozens of different cheese combinations. They eventually narrowed down these recipes and they approached their harshest critics with their reinvented pizza. The critics of course liked the pizza when they were confronted by the head chefs and put in front of a camera. But Domino's wanted to make it clear that they weren't just looking for biased, positive feedback. So they went ahead and opened a pizza review tracker in Times Square. The review tracker constantly displayed both good and bad reviews left by customers. All this transparency motivated many customers to give Domino's another shot. And given that the pizza was actually good now, customers started to respond positively to these changes. Who would have thought that making good pizza would have resulted in more happy customers? Anyway, moving on to Patrick's next strategy, we have streamlining the Domino's experience. As we discussed at the beginning, the thing that made Domino's popular in the first place was their insane convenience and speed. 
Domino's had always specified that they weren't just a pizza company, but that they were a pizza delivery company. And now that Domino's was making a likable pizza, they could return to their roots. The first step in regaining their convenience lead was creating a single point of sale system. In the early 2000s, franchise owners had the option to either use Domino's sales system or to create their own point of sale system. All franchises strongly recommended that franchise owners use the company's systems. But it was standard to leave the final decision up to the franchise owners. Domino's, however, went against the grain and forced all franchise owners to use the Domino's system. Many franchise owners would actually sue Domino's, but Domino's would end up winning in court. Though this was a controversial move at the beginning, the centralized point of sale system streamlined Domino's international experience. Aside from streamlining their customer experience, Domino's also streamlined the dough production process. Instead of making the dough at each Domino's location, Domino's has a set of 18 dough factories across the US that supply the 6,000 stores. This may not sound like a big deal, but this system has allowed Domino's to achieve unthinkable economies of scale and it's actually one of their crown jewels. Anyway, moving away from streamlining production and delivery, we have the early embracement of technology. After the release of the iPhone, Domino's was actually the first pizza company to introduce a mobile ordering system. People could order from the comfort of their couches, and more importantly, they didn't even have to talk to someone. With how antisocial our generation is nowadays, this was a game changer. Domino's also gamified the entire process as much as possible. When you added toppings, you were able to visually see them pop up on your virtual pizza. And you could track the progress of your pizza throughout the entire cooking and delivery process. Again, with shortening attention spans and growing impatience, being able to track your pizza live was a genius idea. Domino's didn't just stop right there either. Patrick embraced every technological development he could. One of these opportunities was drone delivery. Starting in 2013, Domino's began developing drone deliveries, and they would end up making the world's first pizza drone delivery in November of 2016. This never really caught on, and I don't think the FAA was big fans of the project. But Domino's was nonetheless trying every avenue possible to speed up delivery. Another such project is Domino's self-driving car project. Initially, Domino's was trying to modify a traditional Ford vehicle into a self-driving car, and they actually launched it back in 2017. There was always a safety driver though. But recently, Domino's has been testing a new self-driving car from a robotics company called Neuro that doesn't have a safety driver. Maybe this will end up saving Domino's a lot of money, but we'll just have to wait and see. Speaking of making money, we have Patrick's third strategy which was increasing franchisee profits. Though franchises are quite popular, franchise owners don't actually make that much money. In most cases, it's the franchises themselves that are pulling in the majority of their profits with all of their fees and extremely low costs. While this might sound like a great deal for the corporate company, this is actually not the case over the long term. You see, when your franchise owners aren't making that much money, you're probably attracting low quality franchise owners. In 2008, the average Domino's franchise owner was only making $49,000 per year. That's not a bad amount, but there's so many easier ways to make $49,000 per year that don't involve operating an entire Domino's location. Patrick was well aware of this, so instead of expanding the chain as fast as possible and charging higher fees, Patrick focused on increasing the profit per store. Between 2006 and 2013, Domino's location growth was quite small, averaging just 4% per year. By not rapidly increasing the number of stores, Patrick was able to focus all of the increased traffic from Domino's growth into the existing locations, which significantly increased the profit per store. By 2016, the average franchise owner was pulling in $133,000 per year. Now, that's still only about half of what you would expect from opening a Chick-fil-A location, but that's still a night and day difference from $49,000. This substantial increase in profits attracted much higher quality franchise owners, and owners were much more open to invest into the stores. This allowed Domino's to convince many more owners to remodel their locations into something called the pizza theater model, which was designed to boost pickup order customers. By implementing all of these changes, Patrick was able to increase Domino's profits from a low of $37 million in 2007 to $343 million in 2018. That same year, Patrick actually retired from Domino's after giving the company another life. After leaving Domino's, Patrick took a year off before joining a mid-sized private equity firm called the Carlyle Group, and he's been working there ever since. As for Domino's, Rich Allison, the former president of Domino's, took over as CEO. And it doesn't look like growth is slowing down anytime soon. Since Patrick left, Domino's stock is almost up another 100%. And that's how Domino's squashed every company you can think of. Who knew a pizza chain would outperform the tech giants? Which pizza chain do you guys think offers the best pizza? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you're glad that Domino's reinvented their pizza. 
And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.